Okay, so there's trigonometry. So what we're going to be dealing with in Chapter 2 are right triangles. Real quick, who knows what a right triangle is? Chloe? When it is a square. When it's a square, okay. Like, like 90, 90 degrees. degrees. 90 degrees, right? Square. Yeah, that's, you just cut the bottom. I know what you meant. That's a square. That means this is... Okay, real quick, what else do we remember about triangles? Do all three angles add up? 180. Okay. 180. We get it, we get it. Chloe knows so much about triangles, okay? So if this is 90 degrees, these other two angles here, they also add up to 90 degrees, right? Just a quick breakdown. Uh, review. You don't have to take all this stuff down if you want. Sam, I like your gum. I'm just doing it. That's, that's fair. You should, actually. But this part you don't have to. Hopefully you guys remember all this, right? Uh, other things we talked about with right triangles, or you guys would have talked about with the right triangles. Uh, I don't think you guys do trigonometry in grade 9 anymore, right? But you would have done... Oh, we already yeah. did that. Yeah, you should have done this. This should be reviewed. Do we need to know how we do it though? What do you mean? Like we did it, but do yeah, you'll have to do it again. You'll be doing you'll be doing this a squared plus b squared equals c squared over twelve. Mm. It's it's not like it's hard. You're adding, maybe subtracting, taking a square root. Nothing too crazy. Does everyone remember what a squared plus b squared equals c squared is called? Sam. Pythagorean theorem. Very good. I had a prof in university. We call it Pythagoras's theory. Because he felt like he knew Pythagoras on a first name basis. So, this is theorems. Um, so, yeah, this is the theorem of Pythagoras. Um, a squared and B squared, they're any regular side of the triangle on the 90 degrees, right? Like you'd say this is A squared, this is B squared. Does anyone remember what's special about C squared? It's the total. It's not the total. Adam. It's the hypotenuse. Excellent. Isn't it always the longest side? That's what the hypotenuse is. I spelled that wrong, but I don't care. Hypotenuse. So we need to break this down. Um, in a minute. If you want to take some of this down, you can. But we're going to get into it here in a little bit. All right. I basically just wanted to make sure you guys remembered what the hypotenuse is. Okay. It's the longest side of the triangle. It's also the side directly across from the 90 degree angle. All right. 90 degrees is right here. Boom. Say hello to Mr. Hypotenuse directly across from it. That's not even 90 degrees, but it's close enough. Okay? So that's the key word there, hypotenuse. Okay? We're going to start labeling these triangles now. All right? Now this part, hopefully you guys have room right at the top here where it says the tangent ratio. We're going to start looking at the triangles. Alright, here's our 90 degrees, we're going to start looking at angles and sides, okay? I'm going to use this angle here, I'm going to call it angle theta, that's the Greek symbol for theta, for whatever reason that's the symbol we use for angles. A dot? No, it's a circle, it's an O with like a fancy loop through it, okay, it's a Greek symbol. I don't know why we use it for angle, we just do. Okay? So now we know that this longest side directly across from the 90 degrees, that's my hypotenuse. I call it hype for short. I'm all into shorthand. I'm lazy. All right? Now, these other two sides have interesting names as well that we've given them. All right? We call the side. That is, across from the angle that we're looking for, this unknown angle, we call that the opposite side. Okay? Because it's opposite the angle that we're working with. Okay? So we call this opposite. You guys should take this drawing down if you have room in your notes. Like anywhere? Oh, up at the very top. Oh, we have no notes there. Then get a piece of loose leaf book, too. Okay, I'll have to make sure I reformat the notes. This is my fault, first day. Why can't we just write it right here? We'll do it there. Yeah, wherever it works. Okay.
okay? And we call the side that touches the angle we're looking for, we call that the adjacent side. All right, or ADJ, adjacent, okay? So these are my three sides. There's always a hypotenuse, there's an opposite side, and there's an adjacent side. Okay. Now, with trigonometry, whether it's sine, cosine, or tangent, are these terms you guys have heard before? No. No? Okay, these are ratios of sides. Okay? So to find anything for tangent, any angle, it's always a ratio. Okay? We're going to talk about tangent today now. Tangent is always... Opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, that's in your notes. Yeah, you take the, if A of an acute angle in a right triangle, then the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. Opposite over adjacent. I will give you this formula on test. Okay? This formula works for any right triangle, okay? And it will always be this, okay? Now, a few things to note out of the notes here, guys. It's very important to know this both in mathematics and in real life. Like I told you guys, I helped build a house this summer. We did a lot of work with right triangles. We did a lot of Pythagoras theorem. I did a lot of sine and cosine, actually, to figure out some stuff. Cool. Okay? Because, uh, you know, you want your house to be square. You don't want a house that's all crooked. So this is 90 degrees. So triangles with 90 degrees, you use a lot of when you're building. Okay? So it's really important to use this stuff. Okay, so let's look at the first example there. I'm just going to write it out. So that first example of that triangle, we have... This guy here. This is triangle X, Y, Z. Now, when you're dealing with triangles, whenever there's a letter in the corner, that's your angle side. Okay, that's the angle you're working with. We know that this is 90 degrees here. And we know that this length is 12, and this length is 6. Now, I could ask you guys to find the length of the hypotenuse, but I'm not going to bother. Okay. So let's say I wanted to find find the tangent of x. What's that ratio? So that I'm working with this angle right here. Let's do the first one together. Remember, tangent is over, over adjacent. So my opposite side to x, the one directly across from it, is x. Nice. And then the adjacent side to X would be 12, correct. 6 over 12. Now, depending how good you guys are with fractions, you should be able to see I can take a 6 out of both those numbers. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So my tangent of this angle is one half. There you go. There's the tangent ratio. All right. How are we feeling so far about that? Not good. Not good. What's bothering you with it? No, I just don't get it. But don't but, you get? It? No, it's okay. I'll figure it out. You sure? Okay, keep me posted. Next one. All right, so now let's do tangent of z. Is that right? Yeah. Very good. This angle here, so 12 is my opposite side. Twelve divided by six equals Here's a nifty, nifty way to remember the formula for tangent. 
So on. All right. So, so the tangent ratio and other the other two ratios that we're going to learn later are useful because if we have two sides or lengths of a triangle. Jade Kosh, could you come to the office, please? Jade Kosh to the office. Um, you can find anything. You don't need to measure. We're not going to be measuring angles with protractors or anything. If you have two sides of a triangle, we can find everything else about this. We can find the other length with, Py with Pythagoras, and I'm going to show you guys now how to use tangent to find these angles. Okay? So to find tangent, if you look there, there's steps to follow. These are important. Find the ratio, opposite over adjacent. Okay? Then what you need to do is, since tangent A equals opposite over adjacent, then if we have the ratio and you want to find the angle, you need to do the inverse or opposite of tangent. It's tangent negative 1 on your calculator. Okay? Everyone should have, you should have this button on your calculator. Everyone has 10, right? Oh, your phones will have them. You'll have to flip them over on their side. If you guys want, I have calculators too. You guys want some calculators? Yes. Okay, just hold on. I'll show you guys. Extreme. All right. So I'm just going to pause this while we go through. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to determine uh, angle K. And angle A. Okay? So let's start with K first. I'll do that in a So this is my angle K here, right? So I'm looking for the tangent of K. Wait, what? Tangent of K. Nine. Well, okay, we know it's opposite over adjacent, right? So it's going to be 9. Okay. 13. Okay? So now what we need to do is we need to figure this out. So what the first thing you're going to do is take your calculator and go 9 over 13. 9 divided by 13. And you should get... What is Yeah. 0.6923. And a bunch of other numbers. Four decimals is usually more than enough. Three, three, four. Yeah, go to four. It's kind of the typical thing. Now what you need to do, so this is the ratio. You have to convert that into an angle. So you're going to use, you're going to take 10, negative 1 of that. You're going to do the opposite, okay? Ideally, some of you guys have an answer key or an answer button on your calculator, so you just put the answer in. Or you can just, like, Chloe, you'll just hit Shift-10, and it should give you the number. Um, Three, four? Five decimals? Yeah. Go to one decimal place. You guys should get... Okay, let's try it for angle 10, okay? 
set up. I'll do this one in different color. Tangent of n. Okay, you guys try to set this up on your own now, okay? I got it. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You got the final answer? Yes. Okay, keep it to yourself. So then your ratio is just 13 over 9. And that becomes tangent big capital N 1.4. Yeah. And then n equals, you go 10, negative 1, and 1 1.4. And you should get something like, um, what did you guys get, like 54? 55.3. 55.3. And if you look real quick and go 34.7 plus 55.3, you're going to get 90. Okay. And what do all three sides of a triangle have to add up to? 180. 180. So if these two are 90, we know this side's 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. Now, that might work out every time for you guys. You might find like you'll go to add them up and they only add up to like something like 89 or 91. Or 90.3, that's okay. Uh, basically, it just depends on how you're doing your rounding. Some calculators will round things differently. Like if you go five decimal places instead of four, or you do three instead of four, you're going to get a slightly different number. As long as you guys are close, I'm okay with that. Okay? Um, just try to go to four decimal places. That way you probably get a close enough end to the right answer, okay? It should be fine. So four decimal places when you're writing them out like this, and then your final answer only needs one. Okay? And there might be a bit of an error there with the round. Questions, concerns, thoughts? Cool. All right. Here we go. Let's do another example. Okay. Clyde River on Banffin Island in Nunavut has a latitude approximately 70 degrees. Uh, the diagram shows the side view of some solar panels. Determine whether the design for the solar panels um, is... Oh, we're not doing this one. I forgot. I should have taken this off. Never mind. Okay, let's try number three here. A support cable is anchored to the ground five meters from the base of a telephone pole. The cable is nine meters or 19 meters long. It's attached near the top of the pole. What angle to the nearest degree does the cable make with the ground? Okay. So, we got to draw this one out. Um, so, you have a telephone pole. Now, ideally, your telephone pole is straight up and down and makes a 90 degree angle with the ground. And you also have a cable attached to the top of the pole, like so. Now, based on what we've been given, what do we know about this drawing. If this is my pole and that's my cable, how far apart are the cable and the pole on the ground? Five meters. Five meters. We know that this distance here is five meters. We also know that the cable is 19. So we know that this length here is 19 meters. And we want to know what angle to the nearest degree does the cable make with the ground? So we're looking for that angle. Now, based on this drawing, can we use tangent to solve for the uh, angle? No, we can't. We have the hypotenuse side. We don't have the, which side are we missing? Opposite. We're missing the opposite side. So we need to solve for that. And thankfully, you guys already know Pythagoras theorem. Right, we know so we can solve for this length here. So I'm gonna go a squared plus five squared equals nineteen squared. What's up, 
Yeah, I'm going to come down and work out here. It's quite a quick walk, okay? okay well, All right. I just wanted to make sure. All right, sounds good. Job. Yeah, you will. So you'll bring the five squared over. So it's going to be nineteen squared. Big number. Nine times nine is one eight. Three seventy one. Wait, instead of squares, is it just nineteen nine? Is it three sixty one? Okay. Nineteen times nineteen. Yeah. So far, so good. We're all okay with this. Um. Go. Oh, we're looking. Well, we will. Don't worry. Just, just, just. Three thirty-six. Three thirty-six. That's a squared. So you take the square root of both sides, right? I have no idea what the square root of 336 is. Uh, 18.3 meters. 18.3 meters. So that 18.3 is my opposite. It's the height of the telephone pole, right? Now I have the opposite and I have the adjacent, so I can do tangent here. So I can go tangent of theta. Oh, right. 18.3 divided by 5 equals 3.66. Double check that you guys get this answer, okay? Oh, don't forget. Degrees. 